Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be talking about the 20 week moving average and the 21 exponential moving average. So the SMA, the simple moving average versus the EMA. Now, if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So if you follow my channel for a long time, you know we always talk about the 20 week moving average, right? This is the this is the moving average that we've been looking at week over week and, and saying that this is the level that Bitcoin needs to hold to to continue the bull market. So if we have weekly closes, weekly candles closing below the 20 week moving average, then it typically means it's the bad news bears, um, at least in the short term. Now, of course, we can recover quickly. Uh, when I say recover quickly, I mean by the next time we test the 20 week, it could take approximately six months. If you if you take a measured move from here to this point, it was approximately six months later uh, from when we failed this test to when we failed it again. So you have to go below the 20 week, then back above it, then come back down and test it. It's the last test, I would say, for a bull market. Um, and then here's another one where we failed it. Then when we tested it again, it was approximately another six months later. So failing it, 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 it sort of kicks the can down the road, so to speak, in terms of how long it's going to take or for, for, the, for the Bitcoin bull market to get started. Obviously, the, the bull market could have already started, right? We've had the Golden Cross, we're above the 20 week moving average. It's just that the final test that we really wanna to see to continue to resume confidence in the cryptocurrency asset class is to see the 20 week moving average hold as support. And, and so far we've had wicks down to it. We haven't even had any bodies of, of weekly candles down at the 20 week moving average yet. And if you go back to the last market cycle, this, you know, we had the first time we tested the 20 week moving average, we tested it for approximately four months before breaking back out above it. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because one of the most common requests are wanting me to look at the exponential moving average and not just any EMA, specifically the 21 week EMA. So the 21 week EMA. Now this this moving average is it's it's used by other people. I I tend to prefer the 20 week moving average just because I do think it has uh, been pretty definitive in identifying momentum shifts in the market, um, basically being resistance during bear markets, and and support during bull markets. But with that said, you know there's there are a lot of people out there that like to use. EMAs, and the reason is because they, you know, they react a little bit quicker because it's it's essentially weighting the price more recently, more so than it's weighting the price, say, weeks ago or months ago. So, or it depends on whatever time frame you're looking at, but it, it, it puts more emphasis on recent price points rather than rather than older price points. So it, it reacts quicker. So if you put the 21 week EMA on the chart, you can see, you know, you can see how how this is has respected the price of Bitcoin has respected this level. So the first thing to remember, right, is the if we if we put back on here the 100 week and the 200 week, when we when we broke through the 20 week moving average over here, we then pretty quickly fell below the 21 EMA as well, and we went down to the 100 week moving average. Over here, however, going below the 21 week moving average first, then led to going below the 20 week after. So it doesn't always necessarily mean that we're gonna break one before we break the other. But then I thought, you know, why don't we just combine the two and get more or less a band, okay? So let's let's do that. So what we have here, I just created the 20, the 20 week SMA and the 21 EMA crossover. So what you see here is the red line is the 20 week moving average and the green line is the 21 week EMA. So instead of just having these two moving averages, we've actually color coded the band, I color coded it so you could see a general support region regime and a general resistance regime. Now again, I prefer the 20, the 20 week moving average, but the reason I'm showing this is as I've mentioned before, a lot of you tend to like exponential moving averages as well. 
And in a bull market, you can see that they actually perform quite similarly. I mean, this is the 20 week and the 21 week EMAs. You can see they're fairly similar. Um, in this case, you know, we had the, the, the body of the candle go down to the, to the 21 EMA and then the wick go down to the 20 week moving average, simple moving average. Okay. So you can see there's, you know, there's, there's reasons that people, people like to use both. And so I just combined them into a single indicator called, you know, 20 SMA and 21 EMA crossover. And I mean, obviously you can just do this in, in PineScript, just shade the region between the, between the two moving averages. But I thought it was interesting um, to look at this. So if we, if we go back and look at, at these crossovers, you can see, you know, once we go below here, it then ultimately led to us going all the way down. We came back up into the band, the, the, the region between the 20 and the 21, and then ultimately back down. So we were not able to get above it. Um, in the same manner, this time we got above it. When we came back down into the band, that was it. We were not able to get back above it in the short term, and then we came down, okay? And then we came up, and now, we're actually testing just above it. So we have not actually had crosses into the band yet, not for the body of the candle. Yes, we've had wicks that go down. We already know this. We've had wicks that go down to, you know, to the 20 to the 20 week moving average in that in that general ballpark, but we have not actually had weekly candles within this band, okay? Now, for those astute observers, if you're viewing this video on a desktop, you might notice these light green bands in the background. What all this is, is I just, I, I, I added a background color whenever, whenever they cross. So whenever, whenever the 20 week moving average crosses the 21 week EMA, um, I just color, I just provided a little band in the background to show, okay, it's a cross, right? And, and here you can see we had a cross where the 20 week went above the 21 and ultimately it, it started moving down. Um, and then over here we had we had a cross right here, which was accompanied by the, the move back up, and then again more crosses later on. I don't think I haven't really I haven't really paid too much attention to it yet. I don't really think the crosses are, are that important. There, but but what I do think is that you know having a band rather than rather than say a single uh, line could be useful to some people. Again, I still prefer the 20 week moving average, but it is somewhat aesthetically pleasing just to, to look at the band and, and identify its general support regions, right, in a in a bull market, right? These are the these are the, the support regions that we've identified in the bull market, which is essentially many times it actually is is between the 20 week SMA and the 21 week EMA. So you know, and we can we can continue to go further back if we want. But again, in the last market cycle, you can see that this was a a resistance point. Um, but once we once we got above it and we were able to sustain it, it was it was pretty pretty much good news for the for the foreseeable future. Now we're at that point in the market cycle where we are testing it again. We failed to hold it here, we failed to hold it here, and now we are trying to hold it. Um, uh, over the last several weeks. And, and we're currently in our sixth week of trying to hold this level. Uh, I think the longer, I know a lot of people would argue that the, the more time that we spend testing it, uh, the more likely we are to break down below it. I actually contend the opposite. I think that, uh, I think that the longer we, we stay just above it, the more bullish I will be. So if, if you imagine in, in the cryptoverse, one of the multiverses, if, if we're in the multiverse where we hold the 20 week, if we're, if we're in a cryptoverse as part of the multiverse where we hold the 20 week moving average and obviously the 21 week EMA, and it takes us say another 12 weeks of just flirting with that level and then we move up, this would make me incredibly bullish. If on the other hand, we, we fall below it in the short term, then I would I would actually turn short term bearish and, and think that we're going to kick the can down the road and that we're going to need to test the 20, 20 week moving average sometime sometime later on. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you guys think this is useful, having having it color coded between the 20 week SMA and then the 21 week EMA. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. 
give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. And then finally, if you guys want access to premium content, weekly reports, weekly videos, make sure you check out my website at intothecryptoverse.com. That'll wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.